here's some breaking news. The left is sabotaging Michael Savage's new book. We've just received photos taken last night at the Barnes & Noble in Irvine, California, at Irvine Spectrum Shopping Center. They looked for my book on the octagon table, and they found them thrown on the floor underneath the table. The listener says, please have someone call this Barnes & Noble and tell them to pick Savage's books up off the floor. Three images are attached. Now, you say this is not really news. Oh, it's not really news when they start trashing books? You want to live in a nation where bookstores are letting people go in or they have clerks who are sabotaging conservative books? That's your idea of living in a free society? What's next? I'll tell you what's next. The outright banning of books which offend the government. The burning of books which offend the government. Brown shirts going into bookstores and seizing books and burning them in huge piles. And who will cheer it on? Why, all of your progressive friends would cheer the burning of books. You know who they are. You know what they want. First they came for the books, but you didn't raise your voice because you don't read such books. And then they came for the conservatives, and they rounded them up, but you didn't say anything because you didn't really like the conservatives. You thought that they were all mean anyway. And then they came for you, and there was no one left to stand up and speak for you. History, my friends, has a weird way of repeating itself. And it starts in very small ways. Very small wee steps. Fascism takes, it does. But I'm not here to recite poetry. I'm here to receive your calls at 855-407-282. I'm with you for a full three hours today on the Savage Nation. We've gone through a half an hour, and we've already given you more news than you could probably handle. I realize it's not the World Series, but it's the World Series of politics you're listening to right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Savage States of America. Like President Obama, I haven't been elected, but uh, welcome to the program. I am the President of a certain number of the American people who listen to the show religiously on a daily basis, but not to all American people. You see, Obama and I have that in common. Neither, uh, neither of us have really been elected to the office. He was selected, and I've been selected. The difference is he has power, and I have no power. The difference is I don't say that he should be banned. I say he should be challenged. He says talk radio should be eliminated. Instead of having debates over talk radio. So he's targeting talk radio now, is he? Well, I'm not surprised. 855-407-2. That was, that was Elizabeth's review? She wrote that review? Are you sure? Elizabeth, WJR, go ahead, please. That was your review? Yes, I did write it. Um, Wait, it hold, hold it. Thank you. Your name is Kakuthis Scribendi? Yes, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, seriously? You did the Amazon review under that name? Who is Kakuthis? That, no, it means, it means an urge to write, like a, a compulsion to write in Latin. How are you so smart? Thank you. Because you know what? Even though I went to public school, you just have to have a critical, you know, mind, and just don't. Well, how did how did how did you come to read Edmund Burke? Uh, because I taught myself. I I I, I just uh, I taught myself. I basically just had to teach myself. <laughs> El Elizabeth, let me ask you something. What year are you in in college? I'm in. Tw I'm twenty seven. No, but I'm saying. So you already graduated, right? Yes. And where do you, don't say where, but what do you do for work? Well, currently, I am a freelance, uh, a visual artist, um, a watercolor painter. Um, and oh my God, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, terrible watercolor painter. Oh, maybe I can help you. Okay, well, interesting. Um, if you need, come on, Elizabeth, I want to help you. Tell, come on, can I help you in any way? Can I put one of your pictures up on michaelsavage.com? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Get Elizabeth's, you know, email, send it to us. Ryan will then post one of her pictures on my website. And then, Elizabeth, get ready for people who want to buy your paintings, okay? Gosh, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, one good turn deserves another. Now, you live in Pittsburgh, PA. Is that where you live? No, I do not. I actually live in uh, suburban 
Detroit. Suburban Detroit. So I, yeah. I assume you're outnumbered. First of all, you are a conservative, and you're living in a very liberal community. I, I suppose that you don't have too many friends, do you? I'll tell you something. I was the president of the D Diversity Club in high school, actually. <laughs> Come on. You, know you were the president of the Diversity Club? So how could you wind up writing such a great review? We got to go on field trips all the time to, like, inner city high schools and just, like, talk about, like, how white people were so racist. And I was just like, you know what, this is just a bunch of crap. Um, <laughs> I've always been a good writer, I think. I mean, you know, I've always liked to write, so. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not letting you go so fast. You're a visual artist. You're a brilliant writer, by the way. You wrote a review on Amazon. I didn't know you. And here you are calling the show, so obviously you're a listener. Do you do you have a circle of friends who have a, the same world view that you do? You know what? In America, people conservatives and people who aren't like Obama and Bill Ayers and all those like weird multicultural cult members. It's we're outnumbered, and so it's difficult. So you know, yeah, of course I have. Do you, do you, Elizabeth, do you have a boyfriend? No, I do not. I'm single. Well, I would suppose it's very hard to find a man you can talk to. First of all, most young guys are political dummies. Secondly, they probably go along with the program on uh, the liberalism that you hear everywhere. Isn't that true? You know what? But I, I, what I've found is that the most intelligent people are always the conservatives. You're not going to find, like, you know... Who I'm are, are your parents conservative or liberal? No, my, my parents are like NPR. I mean, m my dad, who's a psychoanalyst, has, is like a lifelong subscriber to the New Yorker and stuff. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at your father. <laughs> oh, no, but no. You're, you're, but, wait, but you're presenting a stereotype, aren't you? Come on, are you serious? Uh, psychoanalyst subscribes to the New Yorker, reads the New York Times religiously, correct? You know it every day. Mm -hmm. And the drug wow. Press, and so you are, you are a renegade. You became a conservative child. What what does he think of your politics? You know, my uh, honest, my sister is at twenty one. She's like a Bernie Sanders supporter and a total, unfortunately, a uh, fledging social justice warrior. Sorry, Sarah. Love you. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, some some people you, you just can't. They just are. Really no, but what what does your father think of your politics? Does he think you need medication? Oh my God! Well, I'll tell you something. When I first, when I was first like a leftist back in like seventh, eighth grade, when I first began my political journey, I would read like Chomsky, and I would show it to my dad, and he'd be like, "Oh my gosh!" And so we read it together. But then, but then as I became more conservative and started to show, you know, my my dad like the new Criterion and other like conservative, like you know, intellectual publications, it's sort of like been a journey that. <laughs> is he is he going down? Is he is he somewhat coming over to your side? Or, not, or his mind is made up. Absolutely, both of. But it's it's so my my um, dad's side of the family is just because this side of the family is like, I mean, they're multi generational New Yorker subscribers. Okay, so it's like so they're multi generational leftists. In other words, uh, they've never left the the immigrant docks of the of the ancestor who came in from Russia, probably. From uh, England, I think. Like, oh, you come from England, how would so you weren't a red diaper dopa baby raised on seltzer, I assume. Well, but my my grandparents. You you didn't have seltzer at the table where the carbon dioxide poisoned your brain. Well, I'll, almost I'll do you one better. Um, I have a lot of Presbyterian ministers and people involved in the Presbyterian Church, which has been completely taken over by. Oh come on, the Presbys are as liberal as you can ever imagine. What about your mom? I'm not prying, am I? Absolutely not. No, I no. <laughs> no, is your mother conservative or liberal? Uh, what's that? I'm sorry. Is your mom conservative or liberal? Oh, well, my mom is. Um, a Lebanese Christian, and so her family's always been more conservative, being like second generation immigrants. Oh, because she also knows what happened to Lebanon when the Muslims were invited in. That's in being the, the Maronite Christians were completely slaughtered by Muslims in Lebanon. Oh, sh don't say that. That that might upset people to hear what actually happened in Lebanon. Hear the truth. How the how the Paris of the Middle East was decimated after the Palestinians were invited in 1970, after the Black September Massacre. And by the way, the Black September Massacre occurred when the Jordanian military uh, destroyed, killed uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of Palestinians when the Palestinians tried to take over uh, Jordan. More Palestinians were killed by the Jordanians than have ever been killed in all the wars with Israel. Do you know that? I do. And 
and nobody, nobody wants the Palestinians. That's the thing that no one wants to admit. Nobody wants them. Jordan does not want them. Hamas is, you know, what Hamas is like Islamofascism. But no, no one, nobody wants the Palestinians. And so all the, all the, all the, all the Gulf states will say, oh, we're going to give all this money, you know, to Gaza and the West Bank. But they're just, you know, then they. Well, I tell you the truth. Everybody knows the Palestinians are actually the most intelligent of all the Arab people. You ask anybody who knows that that's the truth. But as you well know, intelligent people tend to be a bit of a problem, as you can hear on this show on a daily basis. And, of course, as you know in your, in your own life. Look, I don't know what to say to you other than this. Elizabeth, I had no idea. Tell the audience we're not making this up. This is not a stage call. Swear on a Bible. It's me. I can confirm it. If, if there's some way, like, if I could, I'll go into my account and, like, make a... Well, okay, but I didn't know you. I just picked, I thought, the best review of my book from Amazon. It turns out to be you. I had no idea who wrote it. Then you then you call the show. It's what a delightful experience this has been. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm sending you three free copies of Government Zero. One for yourself, one for your mother, one for your father. And I'm also inviting you to give your email address to uh, Robert, to Jim. And when we get it, I'll let you post one picture on michaelsavage.com. Is that a fair deal? That's wonderful. Thank you so much. But remember, when we post your picture, Get ready for people who are going to want to buy your art to support you. Thank you very much for calling the program. Now, wasn't that amazing? Th this is the spontaneity of talk radio that we all live for. You know, radio, when it becomes predictable, is unlistenable. It's that simple. I don't have to bash anyone. Make your own decisions. But having said that, I have to bash someone. Because I, I have to. I'm sorry. Look, Trump bashes fellow um competitors let's say for the throne doesn't he so why should i not tell you what i think is going on since it's the most competitive business in the media talk radio go oh, for about a week now now i don't know if rush hears the show or he has handlers who re read my trans they wednesday that the republican leaders won hillary in the white house and uh Robert, the best example of that would be from which interview? Was that on uh, the Newsmax, the Breitbart interview, that's right, which I gave last Saturday, where I talked about the um, Kabuki play called the uh, the uh, Benghazi hearings, where they anointed Hillary, remember that? Do we have a short clip of that, Robert? Can we play that one? Let's hear that Admiral one right now. Charles Gouet, commander of the carrier wow. strike group, who could have sent aid to Benghazi, now, you ask yourself, why didn't the Republicans call him during the hearing to testify that he was ready, willing, and able to send uh, aid? The answer is because they probably threatened him. They retired him with full pay under the assumption that if he ever testifies against this administration, this corrupt government zero of ours, at least that's my guess, okay? I'm writing a movie script. And if it was a movie... The Republicans really wanted to show the good guys winning. In the end, they bring in one of these admirals, generals fired right after Benghazi. He testifies. The hearing erupts into a stunned silence. That's the end of Hillary Clinton's career. So you ask them, why didn't they bring them in? Answer, because they were in cahoots with Hillary to make certain she walked away unscathed to anoint her the next president of the United States of America. It's a As they say, uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. I'll be right back on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation still going strong after 21 years. God knows how. Most men like me already got the white hat and they're marching around in Fort Lauderdale waiting for The Undertaker. <laughs> We're already six feet under. So what you can do is thank God every day that you're six feet over. That's all I can say. So, you know, the interview on uh, Newsmax received a very wide uh, dispersal. And uh, one of them was on so many different sites. But it, it wound up on InfoWars and someone wrote this where I talk about Carson not being ahead in polls, that it's all nonsense by CBS News. Someone wrote this. They said, some may think Savage is a crazy wild crackpot. I listened to